Roll for Crit presents How to Play Fog of Love in five minutes or less or more. Fog of Love is the romantic comedy board game that pits you and a partner against the trials and tribulations of being in a relationship. So yeah, it's a horror game. Designed by Jacob Jaskoff and published by Hush Hush Projects. Your objective in Fog of Love is to work with your partner in order to meet trait goals and ultimately fulfill one of your potential destinies. Each game uses a single love story scenario and is separated into a few different chapters. Each player will begin with a character card and one personality token on that card at the zero satisfaction level. You'll also have some extra personality tokens and four choice tokens. To kick things off, players will help each other create the characters that they'll be inhabiting for the rest of the game. Each player draws five trait cards and chooses three to keep. Trait cards represent aspects of your character's personality and give you goals to try to accomplish during gameplay according to the personality dimensions area on the board and the color and direction of the arrows as printed on the cards. Keep these trait cards hidden so that only you can see them in your personal card holder, where they will remain a secret until the end of the game. Next, each player gets three occupation cards and chooses one to keep, both revealing their choices simultaneously. This is your character's job. Now each player draws five feature cards. This time you'll be choosing features for your partner, not yourself. Take turns assigning one of your feature cards to your partner until each of you have three. These represent aspects of your partner's appearance or personality that you first noticed about them. After finishing with trait, occupation, and feature cards, any cards that were not chosen are placed face down at the bottom of their respective decks. Now let's talk about personality dimensions and what these colored arrows on your cards actually mean. Each personality dimension on the board relates to a potential aspect of your character. Each is represented by a color and a symbol and separated into two opposite directions, an up arrow and a down arrow. Throughout the game, you'll be placing your own personality tokens onto these dimensions according to cards you play and choices you make. To start off, you'll do this according to each of your features and your occupation. So if your occupation shows an orange arrow pointing up, place a token on the orange extroversion dimension on the upper arrow to indicate that your character is more outgoing. Repeat this process for your three features according to whatever their symbols are as well. Your trait goals will show you multiple arrows of the same color, all pointing in one direction. This means that by the end of the game, you need to achieve that level of balance on that dimension in order to complete that goal. Your total balance in any given dimension is calculated by the tokens you have on either direction. So if you have an individual goal showing three green arrows pointing up, you need a balance of plus three on the gentleness dimension, meaning three tokens more in the up direction than in the down direction. If you had three on each side, they'd cancel each other out and you wouldn't meet your goal. If you had six tokens in the upper arrow and three on the downward arrow, you would meet your goal because six minus three is still three. Do math. Some trade goals are shared rather than individual, which means that it's not just you you have to worry about, you have to calculate the required balance using the combined tokens of yourself and your partner in order to complete it. At the end of the game, for each trait goal you complete, you'll earn some satisfaction points, but you'll lose points if you're unable to complete them. Keep this in mind when choosing traits, features, and occupations at the start. You probably don't want to keep conflicting cards, especially two goals of the same color going in opposite directions. You can keep two goals of the same color going in the same direction, but for the second card you choose, you'll need to double its printed requirements in order to complete it. Once characters are established, players can make up names, decide how their characters met, and finally start the game, drawing five scene cards apiece. There are three different types of scene cards, sweet, serious, and drama. The love story card in play will tell you which to draw at the start of the game, along with any other special rules. The first card played will be the chapter one card. Follow its instructions, then players take turns back and forth. You'll also each have a hand of identical destiny cards, which we'll get to later. On your turn, you will choose one of the scene cards in your hand and play it face up onto the table so that it overlaps the previously played card with the bottom still showing. Scenes will present a situation in your relationship that you need to navigate. Depending on what type of scene card it is, various effects could follow. Most commonly, one or both players will be required to make a choice. They'll indicate which of the printed choices they want by playing one of their choice tokens of the matching letter. If the card says both choose, then both players decide secretly before revealing their tokens together. Generally, a player's choice will have immediate consequences according to the card. A heart symbol with a positive or negative number next to it means that the player who made that choice moves their satisfaction level up or down accordingly on their character card. Use the 10 spot on your character card to indicate the 10's place of your satisfaction level as your character goes up in satisfaction points. Colored arrow symbols instruct the chooser to add new personality tokens to all indicated areas of the personality dimensions on the board. Generally speaking, you should try to make choices that help you complete your trait goals, but may sometimes want to make concessions to help your partner achieve what you think they're going for. Additional effects are sometimes listed at the bottom and could change depending on which choices each player made. You could also be instructed to swap out one of your cards 
cards, discard, draw, or reveal cards from your hand. If you see the keyword tell, that means that you should do a little role playing and come up with something creative matching the card's prompt. Situation cards are scenes that affect the next scene played. Secrets are cards that go face down underneath your side of the board and have different effects depending on whether or not your partner finds a way to reveal them during the game. Reactions are cards that can be played out of turn depending on specific conditions. Minor scenes are actions that occur immediately and are then discarded. You can also choose to discard and replace minor scenes with new scenes at the start of your turn if you don't want them. Some scenarios will also include special event cards which will tell you to bring special events into play tied into that specific story. Once a scene has been resolved according to its instructions, draw back up to five cards. During any given chapter, you can only draw card types allowed by that chapter unless otherwise instructed. Players continue to taking turns playing and resolving scenes until a number of scenes has been played that is equal to the number of the current chapter. This number only includes face-up scenes on the board, not secrets. Once the number is reached, all played cards are discarded and a new chapter begins in the same way. Once all the chapters are completed, the finale card appears, at which time trait goals are revealed and assessed, any leftover secrets are revealed and resolved, and each player chooses a final destiny card. Oh yeah, your destiny cards. Each destiny represents an end game goal, sort of like your trait goals, but more meaningful and more difficult to achieve, often involving personality dimensions as well as satisfaction levels. As the game goes on, various cards may instruct you to discard destiny cards, reveal destiny cards to your partner, or swap in destiny cards from your destiny discard pile. You can never have fewer than two destiny cards in hand. You'll want to try to figure out which destiny card your partner is going for as you'll each have an identical set and it could help you at the end of the game when you'll each need to choose only one to fulfill. Some destinies even allow you to break up with your partner. Read them all carefully and choose wisely based on your position in the game when the time comes. Destinies and traits are secret and shouldn't be discussed openly. Try to read your partner based on their actions instead. And as a general rule, Fog of Love is a storytelling game, so you should try to roleplay and inhabit the minds of your characters as much as possible when resolving scenes and making choices in order to get the most out of it. In conclusion, play, choose, argue, change, fulfill your destiny. It's a love story, baby, just say yes. That's Fog of Love in a nutshell. Did you get all that?